<clears throat> crackheads. Crackheads, I tell you. Hell. My sister's one. But these crackheads are lovable crackheads. A lot of them. Asobi Asobase. Asobi Asobase. The show based on three crackheads. Her, her, and Hanako. The crackhead's boss. This show has one major trick when you first watch it. What do you think of it? I know, just another fun, cute slice of life set in a school where nothing happens the whole time, right? WRONG! Our three leads couldn't be further from that trope. First we've got Olivia, a foreign girl from America, or oh, is it Europe? I can't remember. Who acts like she can speak and write perfect English, but the best she's got is... Bitch, go to hell! I'll fuck you! Oh yeah, she also smells like shit. <coughs> Secondly, we've got Kazumi, the quiet bookworm who wants to start an English club with Olivia so that she can learn English since it's the worst subject. This girl is always looking for ways to use people to better herself. Oh yeah, and she's also shit scared of men. I mean, who who wouldn't be after seeing that? Lastly, but not least, Lee, we have the whole insane asylum in one person, Hanako. She's jealous of the popular kids and goes to crazy lengths to get revenge on them for being popular. She also is directly responsible for an arson attack on a cafe while wearing this outfit, a true menace to society. If none of this quite intrigues you, I have more. In episode 3, the girls are approached by a club, the Shogi Club, which is made up of four fangirls and one absolute endearing beast of a woman. Since the main trio recently formed an unfortunate formal club, they dub the pastimers club, they claim the classroom to go along with it. Unlucky for them though, since the shogi club wants to get their grubby little hands on it, they challenge the main cast to a game. Whoever ends up as the victors gets to keep the classroom for their respective clubs. Fight! The game they ultimately decide on is the kick your shoe off and whoever flings it the farthest wins game. It just rolls off the tongue doesn't it? Or it just rolls off the foot. And no I'm not referring to licking feet. Each team takes turns flinging their shoes as far as they can, all to differing successes. Successes. Sorry, my English is bad. I'm too used to speaking in tongues with your mother, if you know what I mean. After a few turns of this wild game, Olivia's turn rolls around. Olivia, being the cunning, connivering cunt, instantly gravitates towards the swing set. She uses that to her advantage in order to gain extra momentum, in the hopes that she will fling her shoe the furthest. Intense, right? This shit right here needs to be an Olympic sport right away. Anyways, as you saw, it works. The girls are proud, everything is going great, looking to be in their favor and then disaster strikes the shogi club president pulls up on a bike hurls into a lightning quick downward thrust pounces off the bike flings off his shoe how far did it go over 500 miles then it cuts back to her oh my god the shogi club may have won but at what cost since the shogi club president is well injured to say the least she can't attend school so they end up holding the club at her house anyway an indirect win for team crackhead so with the president out cold for the time being the girls get to the keep a da da ba they get to keep the classroom, that's what I was meant to say. All this stuff happens quite early on in the show, and it only becomes more over the top and aggressively cool as the show goes on, with each joke topping the previous in ridiculousness, randomnessness, and hilarity. But enough talk about that, the stew guy. How's the music and the art, you say? Well, hold your horses there, cow man. Let's address the art first. Something I slightly dislike about the art direction in this crackhead documentary is the lightly sunny type filter the show had over it most of the time. I understand that it plays into the joke of making it seem like your average cherry slice of life, but I just don't like the way it looks, you know? Other than that, the art, especially the creepy weirdo faces that are drawn, like, look amazingly great and elevate the jokes presented, but they can be a bit too repetitive at times. Now over to the music side of things. I really like the chaotic contrast the music has with every track. Take these three wildly differently differenting differenting? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sick. But take these wildly different songs, for example. <laughs> Or this one. And then this one, of course.
All in all though, I'll love and leave you my sweet viewer, but before I go, heed my warning general. If you have a crackhead type of humor, and you find this even remotely funny, you'll really enjoy the show. It reminds me of the type of school club I would have wanted to be in, where me and my mates would just go in and have a blast every day instead of, you know, learning anything. But instead, here I was. This show is pretty sick anyway, G. One of the only shows that have made me audibly laugh on the second viewing and third viewing and probably the 69th viewing too. It may be a pretty out there recommendation, but bloody hell is it good. Anyway, see ya.